And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Pisoa. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name of this poet incorrectly. I looked it up online, I couldn't find something that helped me out too much there. But I did find it interesting. So this poet, and it tells you here in the gameplay itself, lived from 1888 to 1935. They were a poet, writer, literary critic, translator, publisher, and philosopher. But interestingly enough, they wrote under many, many different names, but they didn't call them pseudonyms. They called them heteronyms because this author said that they were independent intellectuals feels almost like a multiple personality type of thing, but either way, it's kind of interesting. In this game, you are all Pizua, and you are all um, playing one of these heteronyms. Oh, that's a cool concept. That's interesting. You're writing poems, trying to get the most points at the end of the game. Cool. But how does it play? Let's find out. In this game, you're going to be playing one of the heteronyms of Pessoa. Um, and uh, so you'll pick one. You can play with one side where they have a special ability. But either way, you're going to start with some, you have a hand limit of cards. It shows you here. You'll start with some cards. You have energy. You'll be using energy over the course of the game. And you have spots to keep your points. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. On your turn, and the game's going to take place. Everyone's going to get a turn, and then the thing's going to rotate here. So this will be rotating around, keeping track of the game at the end of the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner. When it's your turn, you are going to take your character and you're going to place them on one of the empty gray spots around the outside of the board. And you'll notice there's only one in each area. Or, if you're on a gray spot, you can pay one energy and go into the mind of Pesoa. And when you do that, you then take the action of the spot where he's at. So he starts over here. Alternatively, players can turn this over at the beginning of their turn for one energy, and they can control him where he can move to an empty black space and do the action of that. So your spaces that you're going to choose are going to be limited. And if you go here or there, those are two spots to get cards. There are cards of different suits. There are three different suits that you can have, um, and these suits are numbered from one to five although some cards have two numbers on them. When you go here, you'll pay energy for cards down here at 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2. You can take as many cards as you want. Up here, all the cards cost one, but you can't take this card till you take these two. Then you can take that card also and add them to your hand. Over here, you can discard cards to take tiles, although at the beginning of your turn, you can move this up or down one. So I might move it up here to discard two cards to take this tile and get five points. Or I can leave it where it is, discard three tiles and get three cards and get both of these tiles. Now these tiles are important because when you go to this spot over here, you're going to make a poem. When you make a poem, you're going to discard cards from your hand in a consecutive order. Well, they don't have to be consecutive, but they have to be ascending. So one, two, four, and I'll say this one's a five. One, two, four, five, that's fine. That's a four length poem. Each of these is going to score me points. So you can see the gray ones here will score me one point. I start the game with all of them scoring one point, but since I put this tile here, this green one's actually going to be worth two points. And the more tiles that I put on the board, the more points stuff you can get. I can make these go down. When you take one of these tiles, you can also instead turn it over here, which gives you another spot of energy and increases the size of your hand. Whenever you make a poem, you're going to take one of the cards in that poem and save it for the end of the game. On the last turn, you can use one card from your hand and all the cards you've set aside to make your final poem. When you make a poem, you're going to get some bonus points. You'll take the, these, these tiles here, which are going to give you points. And if you're one of the first per people to make a size 3, 4, or 5 poem, you'll get some bonus points there also. That's pretty much the game. There's a few other rules of some extra cards you can throw in, and you can play with the special powers. Uh, one last thing, and this is kind of a side thing. The game acts like it's a bigger deal than it is, I think. When you play a card, you have different symbols on the bottom. If you do play a card here or here, and it matches one of the symbols shown that's connected to it, whatever the date is, you get the bonus here. So it might be three points, draw two cards, take a free bookshelf piece, you know, get two energy, etc. I should mention that on your turn, if you can't do anything else, you can also rest, which means you send your guy back into the mind and you refill your energy completely. Anyway, when everything's done, if you make your final poem, you'll be adding up the points that you got for these and points that you've gotten during the game from poems, and whoever does, has made the most points is the winner. 
components for the game, these guys are okay. They, they're a little thin than I want. This is a puzzle board piece. And if you notice, when I just pulled that up, this is actually supposed to stay attached to this middle thing. It's kind of a weird board because this whole contraption is holds the board together. This board is entirely too big. So when you put this contraption together, and I'll snap it in place here, when you put this on the board, you have to attach the puzzle piece without seeing it, which is kind of a weird thing. Like it's here, and so I go, wait, uh, I don't know. I always have problems with that. It looks pretty cool. There's a very nice insert in the box that holds everything. The cards are fun and nice. The Each of the cards on it, when you make a poem, you can put them together and read the poem. Although I will say, I'm sure the poem sounds much better in the Portuguese language. In the English language, it's translated. I don't think poems usually do not translate particularly well. But it's still fun to make that poem and read the poem. All the stuff's pretty good. The rules are pretty straightforward. So I think the components for the game are, are pretty good. Okay, so there's a lot of interesting ideas in this game. A lot of stuff um, comes together in, uh, I mean, uh, this this whole concept of you being uh, a heteronym works in the game mechanisms. Like, I can either move here or I can take control of his mind and then use his thing. That's cool. I like that concept. I like the idea of making poems. Unfortunately, those clever ideas don't translate to making a great game. The game has a few problems for me. One of those problems is it's, it's not that interesting of a game. You take some cards, you turn the cards in. You have only so many turns over the course of the game. I wanna say there are 12 rounds in this game and three of those rounds are resting. That's not a great amount. Like you sit there and you go, I rest. And then I take some cards and then I make a poem. I mean, there's really not a lot else you can do. The most interesting part is getting those bookshelves and deciding if you want more energy or if you want to uh, make the, your poems worth more points. I like that concept, but it just it's kind of random. You're like, oh, I, I, I need a three. There's no threes out there. So I'll do something else until a three shows up or I'll just make a level four poem. Ah, it just really feels like this is a cool idea, but the gameplay, everyone I played it with kept saying, wow, well, it's I like the idea of the game, but it's kind of boring. And that's where I felt too. Uh, it's also a lot of work. Like, how much energy does it take to do this? And how much energy to do this? And you might have an interesting turn, like, I'm going to make a poem. I'm going to do this and play this and do here and get the poem. And the next one goes, I refill my energy. Mm. Also, you often don't have a choice as where to go because most of the spots are filled. I do think it's cool, that concept. You can go into uh, Peso's mind and take over where they are. What a neat concept. That's great. But you're just collecting cards and turning cards in. There's lots of card games that do that. They're also small card games for the most part. This is a big, grandiose game that does not feel big and grandiose. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this poet. I think it's pretty cool, the, the concept here. Becoming, going in his mind, becoming one of his uh, heteronyms or pseudonyms. And I like that concept. I think the idea moving around, that works well. The collecting the cards and turning them in for poems sounds good in theory, although I've seen stuff like this before. Even those side things, I mentioned this, where you play a card on the side and the little icon at the bottom makes it go off. There's always two icons there out of four. The chance of one of the cards you're getting rid of or having the card to get rid of is pretty high. So they almost always work. That's not interesting. I'm not, I'm not, I never felt in this game like I had tough decisions. I was like, I'm out of energy. Increase it. I need some cards. Get some cards. Which spot's cheaper? This one. Which spot's open? This one. What cards should I take? The numbers I don't have and the ones that give me the most points. When I make a poem, what kind of poem should I make? The one that gives me the most points. I never felt like there was tough, interesting choices. It just felt slightly irritable movement to get to the end game. So, man, there's a lot about this game I want to like, but at the end, it just kind of fell a little flat for me. I like this company. I think Pythagoras has some cool ideas, like a lot of their games, but this one, which I think is their biggest one so far, just didn't work for me. So that's Peso. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, clever, but not necessarily fun.